Hey Sagittarius, it's Teresa with One Love, One Light. Welcome to your message. We are going to use the Oracle of Shadow, Shadows and Light, the Black Moon Astrology Deck, the Heal Yourself Reading Cards, the Enchanted Love Tarot, the Disney Villains Tarot, and the Twin Flame Journey Oracle. So let's get started. Please hit the like button and subscribe so that you'll get any... Uh, notifications of further uploads. Thanks. All right. Holy Spirit, what do we have for Sagittarius? Wow, came out right away. And we have the snow angel, number four. The signs are with you already. Hmm. So I'm just getting that there's something like, kind of like red flags or something that are... Um, trying to warn you to go cold or maybe it's something that tends to be the sign for you that says oh no it's time to pull back from a connection or something like that now I'm going to do my best to read this I have um, been having trouble with my vision um, so I will do my best the signs are with you already all right you have already received very definite, clear signs, ones that you have asked for over and over again. The snow angel will reply again, but it is the message you are refusing to hear, not her presence that is denied you. It is your own fear and attachment to hesitating that keeps you on pause. It is time to see what has already been shown to you and to take action immediately without hesitation. The snow angel has shown you so very clearly that you are protected and cared for. Now it is time for you to do exactly that for yourself. And yes, you can. Open your senses up to angelic guidance. So, I feel like maybe, you, maybe you've been asking for a sign. Or you've been trying to uh, determine... Uh, like which direction to go or um, if someone is trustworthy or not and you've been looking for signs and you're not seeing them and you're asking for guidance and asking for signs but it's like your eyes aren't really peeled to to see them somehow it's like um, even though they're being presented to you you're overlooking them because of what you already have decided or because you're a out of fear of not actually seeing these signs. That's what I'm getting here. All right, so we have number 52, void of course moon, missing. Okay, that's number 52. Hmm. Let's read about that one. This one is kind of obscure, I, I remember. I hardly ever draw this card, but... Let's see what it has to say. I think it's the last one in here, maybe. Yeah, it says, The moon is a friend for the lonesome to talk to. Carl Sandburg. All right, so these are the key words here. So it says, Weather cancellations, frustrations, delays, vagueness, hollow feelings, a sense of everything being unreal, Emptiness, making mistakes and other bad decisions, promises not met, unfulfilled plans, the sleeping mind, not paying attention. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Uh, false starts, matters remaining unresolved, um, a time to wait a while and start over, a time to float or rest, serendipitous occurrences, a time to disconnect, things begun requiring adjustments later, inconclusive or wrong medical results, an unfavorable time to apply for a job, get married, or for non-routine medical procedures. So they correspond this card to the Eight of Cups. And the key ideas is silence, failed judgment, false readings, wasted effort, the wrong choice, missed opportunity, sleep, and recovery. So yeah, I feel like they're... Well, I don't believe in any missed opportunities. I feel like if it was meant for you, you would, um, there's no way that it can pass you by. But I feel like you've been asking for signs and they've been given, but you are um, refusing to see them. I, um, yeah, I just feel like um, 
with it being the Eight of Cups, this may be like a sign that it's time to go. And I think deep down what it is is that you do want to go, but you're afraid. So this could be leaving a job, leaving a relationship, uh, leaving a state of mind, um, just letting go of something or walking away from something that you know no longer serves you. Okay, and now we have number 16, Inner Child. So I feel like, okay, so that breaks down to a seven and so does this. So you're surrounded by sevens here, 747, 747, 747. Whoa, that's really interesting because I'm filming and it's 7.47 in the morning. Wow. Okay, so that's a sign right there. The signs are with you. Let's see what this has to say about the inner child. I feel like there's something where you're, it's just about, it's like you want someone to tell you this is what you're supposed to do. Or it's time to take action. It's like, there's a fear of actually being the one responsible to take whatever step this is in your life. All right, number 16. Your inner child is urging you to lighten up a little, get out of your comfort zone, and have fun. In order to be healthy, we must engage our imagination, creativity, and spontaneity. When was the last time you did something spontaneous, intuitive, and outrageous? When and with whom do you feel uninhibited, relaxed, and completely comfortable to be yourself? Your inner child can be your strongest ally or your biggest foe. It can assist you to heal childhood pain, rejection, loneliness, and abandonment. It can take you on an exciting adventure, help you become more confident, daring, original, and bold. Or it can make you behave in childish ways, bring up anxiety, fear, and suspicion. This card beckons you to heal your childhood pain and discover your independence, compassion, creativity, talents, and joy. A healthy inner child can help you connect to your integrity, divinity, and purity. It believes in miracles and creates magic in your life. I don't normally read this. There's like this little action to help you. And I just feel like I'm going to read this. I don't know why. It says, find a photo of you as a child between the ages of three and eight. Look at the picture. What do you see in your eyes? What is the expression on your face? If this little child had a voice, what would she or he say to you? Take some paper and using your non-dominant hand, write dear and put your name. I feel give the little you a chance to express itself. Then write a loving response from the adult you. Ask the child in you what he, she needs to feel better. Then follow the child's recommendation. And the only reason why it caught my eye, because it said, um, find a photo of you as a child between the ages of three and eight. Well, when I meditate or when I do certain prayers, um, and um, I always acknowledge my inner child. And when I do, I picture... I don't just picture me. There's an actual picture of me that I'm picturing, if that makes sense. So um, I think there's something about um, seeing yourself in a certain way. And so I think that maybe it's not just one picture, but take a few pictures and look at yourself in the eyes or look at, you know, how your eyes look and allow yourself your intuition to tell you what message is being sent through that that inner child through that ch child's eyes you yourself you what was being conveyed that was maybe um um not being said at that time all right what else do we have and we have the princess of roses the adventurer yeah so that's really letting your inner child shine like really um finding ways to um, have fun, to go after what will bring you joy, um, what will feel like an adventure where you're not necessarily sure what's behind each corner, where your imagination and creativity can run wild. That's what I'm getting here. 
And your creativity may very well be kind of like in this hibernation mode. And I feel like this is what will help it to, to heal and to thrive again. What else do we have? And we have the sun, absolutely beautiful. So the sun definitely represents all of those things, joy, creativity, victory, clarity, um, healing energy, but it also represents children, so in the inner child. So I feel like there's just, um, there may be a need to actually go out in the sun, but I feel like this is really going to help bring about um, you finding your inner joy, finding your inner child, and helping that light come within to really heal it, um, break down. This feels like, um, it says support, but if you look right here, I mean, it's like, what is that? Uh, I don't know. It just feels like there could be a shell that you need to come out of. That's what I'm getting here. What is the challenge? What's the challenge for Sagittarius? And we have the five of shells, disappointment, regrets, sadness, grief, things that have been lost, things that you've longed for. And so these are things that um, that maybe you've held on to ever since you were a child. And it's there's a need to be able to look at what is it that you have now? Where is your... Um, what type of love and support do you have around you now? And can you be that love and support for that inner child now as an adult that you maybe didn't have from your parents or whoever was raising you? And I think there's also a need to really forgive, um, like have compassion and forgive your parents, um, which may be harder for some than it is for others, depending on um the experiences you had as a child, but um, even if you felt like you had a pretty good childhood, um, no parents are perfect and they carry their own baggage and they carry their own ancestral uh, um, curses and um, they perpetuate things that they went through as a child. So there's always going to be some type of thing that's put on you um, from your parents, whether they were uh, aware of it or not. All right, so what is the advice here? What's the advice from Spirit? And we have the Seven of Wings, the Seven of Swords, opposition. So, yeah, I feel like there's, um, I feel like this is really about um, getting out of your own way. That's what I'm getting here. I feel like you, uh, and it's also about, um, the wavelength that you're on or the vibration, what you're aligning to can be causing things like lies, deceit, betrayal within relationships, whether they're romantic, family, friends, co-workers, whatever it is, because it's almost like um, this look is like very suspicious, right? And so I feel like you are um, perpetuating suspicious activity in your life because you are suspicious of those around you. It's like drawing in um, the exact thing that you might be in fear of happening. What is the outcome here? And we have the two of shells, the two of cups, romance. So yeah, this could be, this is obviously about connection, but is this, it could be romantic. I think it's romantic, but I think for some of you, it's not romantic. And it's about um, kind of going back further than that, um, further than uh, romantic relationships, but more about how you, um, where does trust come in? Have you had betrayals? Have you felt like you have been betrayed or lied to or thrown under the bus or whatever the case is, are you perpetuating that in relationships moving forward? All right. But I feel like you will overcome this and then the end result is this divine connection. All right. The bottom of the deck is the queen of gems, the queen of pentacles, the nurturer. So I kind of get that this nurturer is you, this is you needing to nurture that inner child and kind of warm things up. Um, right now, I just feel like you're kind of emotionally uh, checked out or lost in a sense. 
and I feel like you need to reconnect with that emotion and it's going to start with um, reconnecting with your inner child and going through the process of trying to heal that. Letting your inner child live, having fun, um, seeking adventure, spontaneity, um, saying yes more often. That's what I'm getting here. But let's go ahead and clarify. Show me this page of wands. And we have the Knight of Cups. So I feel like, um, yeah, it's like uh, the Knight of Cups is is like foresees emotional whatever. Sees signs that they're going to either have the opportunity to express themselves or they're going to have to protect themselves emotionally. That's what I'm getting here. So I feel like um, it's about letting that guard down, um, following your heart and allowing yourself to have fun and be more in the moment and less about trying to in anticipate what your next action is. That's what I'm getting here. Show me the sun. What's the sun about? And we have the six of cups. So yeah, I feel like there is, this is also about um, going down memory lane. Six of cups can also represent children or your childhood or the inner child. And I feel like um, you, you, there may be things that you, um, that you're carrying around memories that are not so good, but then there's also certain memories that you um, may, uh, like you need to also remember the good times is what I'm getting here. All right, show me this five of cups. And we have the three of cups. So, <sighs> I'm just looking at this and it's really about how you have learned to connect to your parents. That's what I'm getting here. And I just feel like there needs to be some compassion and understanding um, for, you know, no matter how many books are written out there, there is no um, right or wrong. Well, there's wrong ways, I guess, but there's no um, distinct right way to raise children. There's no... Uh, certain way that works for every personality of every child as far as how the parent connects to the children. Um, so this is in your challenges, overcoming regrets, guilt, disappointment, grief, and being able to feel um, more happy or uh, content with the the connections that you have. That's what I'm getting. And it has to do with your parents. That's what I'm getting here. Show me the seven of swords and we have the seven of coins. So yeah, I feel like there's, uh, I just feel like there's something about really, um, it's like there's an evaluation happening here. And I feel like you're almost looking for something that's not there. So you may be developing trust issues with almost every relationship that you're in, whether it is coworkers. This could even be if you're in a position of leadership, um, your employees not trusting them. Um, and, you know, employees will give you reasons not to trust them. You don't have to make them up in your head. Believe me, I've been in a manager position before. Um, they're more likely to... Uh, um, surprise you and give you every reason in the world to trust, trust them than they are to come up with reasons for them, for you to not trust them, if that makes sense. So even in your work, um, your family, your romantic relationships, it all comes down to what you are allowing your heart to connect to and how you are doing that. Are you doing it from a place of cold suspicion, um, lack of trust, um, uh, fear of getting hurt, um, keeping things at arm's distance. That's what I'm getting. Show me this two of cups and we have the star. So there's definitely room for healing, hope, and faith in the divine, in what is being healed uh, for you. This is like really focusing on looking, I feel like looking in the mirror to um, um, really look in those eyes and see how, look at how both of them are facing, facing us, right? And then this is too, it's about f reflecting but facing yourself and dealing with your own um, 
uh, misgivings or fears or uh, suspicions and then um, being able to let go of that so you can divinely connect because your relationships tend to be a di direct reflection of the relationship you have with yourself. That's what I'm getting here. The bottom of the deck is the Four of Cups. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's going to be um, instead of feeling kind of lost and where is, uh, where is the joy in, in things, um, you're going to come into connecting more with, um, what brings you joy and being able to, it's like once you know what brings you joy and, um, you can heal those things from the past and let go of them, then you can be on the path of, Seeking more joy and um, having it mag be magnetically drawn to you. All right, what else do we have? Any other messages for Sagittarius? And we have guides. So, yeah, I feel like you have been reaching out, praying or meditating, connecting with your guides, um, asking for signs and synchronicities, praying for certain outcomes, and I feel like they have been giving you those, but you've been, um, you know, again, not, not necessarily um, uh, seeing them. Maybe because, you know, you've had your head down or um, in fear of actually facing these things. All right, what else? And we have mute. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like there's something about um, not saying not saying how you really truly feel about a situation, and I feel like that it's like how you've gotten here. Um, this could be with the current relationship you're in, or how you have um, perpetuated a weird cycle that you don't want to continue. Um, you don't want to continue repeating. So. This is like letting you know that when you have um, hollowed yourself out and not spoken up or been your authentic self, um, not spoken up for yourself, um, spoken your truth, then you're not going to fully connect to those that you are trying to connect to. Okay, we have healing and we definitely got that message through here that there is healing that can really come help you balance things by um, acknowledging this inner child, by focusing on things that, that are fun and enjoy um, enjoyable for you, um, things that allow you to be spontaneous and um, free and creative, use your imagination um, and not be so strict and focused on uh, a certain outcome. But yeah, just just experiencing more freedom. Maybe it really is something where you were, uh, where you grew up too fast and didn't get to fully experience a normal childhood. Um, that freedom that you feel when you're not responsible for bills or, uh, you know, everything else like getting to work on time and um, other people like children and uh, spouses and and. Uh, elderly loved ones, whatever it is, you didn't have all those responsibilities on your shoulders. And it was so, it technically should have been the best time of your life, right? All right, what else do we have? And we have bound. So yeah, I feel like there's something, there's something here where you're just, um, you have, it's like some kind of cords that need to be released and it's just it's almost like this uh it's like your your uh i don't know it could be some type of toxic behavior toxic relationship um it's something that has just made you keep repeating cycles trying to prove to someone other than yourself that you are successful or that you are lovable or that you are beautiful or whatever it is and it's just it's like uh, an angry uh, sick manipulation game that someone else may have over you but I feel like it's something that you've really done to yourself because of things that you've gone through in the past 
what else? And we have the answer is yes. And when we got the sun, I said that that's what you need to do is say yes more often. Um, so I feel like if there's something, uh, some kind of question about, well, should I go do this or not? I feel like this is spirit saying um, the answer is yes. But, um, you know, take that how it resonates. I have no idea what the question is, so I'm not telling you what to do. The bottom of the deck is a fresh start, and I feel like that is definitely true when you're talking about healing the inner child. It gives it gives you an opportunity to grow that part of yourself that has probably been like a seed dormant for a very long time. So those are the messages that came through for you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care.